Welcome back. It is 643 on Daybreak, and a lot of us picked up some new hobbies during the pandemic. But for a retired city engineer in Rochester, that new hobby opened up a new chapter in his family history, a new chapter in Buffalo history, and yes, a new chapter in the unknown stories of Western New York. Michael McBride tells me it was like discovering an ancestral pot of gold. And I kept coming across this strange name, Axel McBride. During the pandemic, this retired Rochester City engineer found himself digging into his family tree. I said, Exile McBride, is that like farming equipment? Is it a person, place, thing? What is Exile McBride? But he kept digging and struck gold in the form of news article after news article found via Ancestry.com. I ended up finding over 1,200 articles on Exile McBride between 1880 and 1911. About a thousand of them from Buffalo Papers. I said, whoever this guy was, he was a rock star in Buffalo. Exile McBride was born John Joseph McBride in 1842, and at a young age, he took an active interest in the Young Ireland Movement and Irish nationalism. He was forced to leave Ireland in 1862 to avoid prosecution for his activism, hence his nickname, Exile. He ultimately made his way to the United States and traveled the Erie Canal to Buffalo. In 1866, he took part in the Fenian invasion of Canada and was captured at the Battle of Ridgeway. Bishop Tymon himself helped secure his release. Well, I could not believe that this famous internationally known human rights crusader was my great uncle. According to the news accounts uncovered by Michael, Exile spent the next 40 years of his life traveling the United States at his own expense, speaking out against British oppression in his homeland. He addressed Congress, met with numerous mayors, senators, governors, and even four United States presidents. Exile's death in February 1911 made national news. His funeral was held at St. Joseph Cathedral, and his burial was here at Mount Olivet Cemetery in Brockport. I couldn't wait to come out here and find this eight-foot bronze statue of this guy, and I got here, and his grave was gone. Cemetery records show he was laid to rest in Section H, which is now almost completely void of grave markers, something that Michael McBride hopes to rectify. I hope to have a exile after all his entire life of dedicating over 45 years of, of uh, promoting uh, Irish freedom and independence, that we all have inalienable God-given rights uh, of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, to at least give the poor guy a gravestone again. <laughs> so. <laughs>